everybody, my name is Hammock. Today I'm going to go over a replay of a Dota pub match I recently had as Chen, who is a character that has recently been buffed a lot in the recent uh, 7.30 patch. I like to play Chen a lot, I played him a lot even when he was bad before this patch, pretty much playing him as like a heal bot, building like mech and holy locket. Although now that he's lost his healing amplification on his E, it's a little bit less of a bot. Also, God, why they're playing all the voice lines. Also, you may recognize this isn't TF2. I do like to play other games. I do like to play Dota every so often. It's quite fun, especially if you want a team experience and you're used to TF2 casual and not having a team experience. So here we have Chen, who I've gone over in a previous video. I showed you how to do a really Papega build where you just shadow amulet so that you can make your hero invisible while you have auras, which helps when you're learning micro. And it's been a while since then, and I'm still kind of bad at the game, but I'm having a lot of fun with this character. My micro's gotten a little bit better. I don't need to shadow amulet. And uh, I've been checking out the current uh, Dota people, the Chen mains and stuff, to see what kind of items they use. Sadly, a lot of the people I follow who are Chen mains uh, aren't natively speaking English, so all their guides are either in Russian or in German or whatever. So I made my own one, and the current guide is to rush Vladimir's, because it is very good, and you can basically just give everybody on the team, especially if they've got uh, attack, uh, attack. They, they, they focus around doing attack damage as opposed to spells, you can give them a bunch of regen, and you can push very early, you can stack bucklers, get a bunch of armor, you can get an Aghanim shard, so you can get ancients, and then the fun really begins. So I'm just going to go into this replay. So I'm going to speed up the replay a little bit. Uh, the starting area here, I want to just go over quickly my starting items. I go for a buckler, which gives plus one armor to me and plus two armor to people nearby. And my starting point of divine favor gives everyone two armor. So, it would, so giving this gives me plus five armor, as you can see here, and gives anyone who's next to me within range uh, plus four armor, which is very big early on. It means whenever you auto attack someone for trading, it doesn't feel like it does that much. So let's start here, we go contest the ruin. There's a whole bunch of shenanigans going on. I should probably also set it to player's perspective me. Okay, there is. Uh, that hooks me, but I managed to get away because I'm really cool and they didn't plan for that. And no one was by the bounty, so I get a free bounty here. Also, I have to say that I probably got carried this game because uh, I got a uh, Chaos Knight Earthshaker pre-made in the game who were uh, communicating and speaking English. And that usually means you're going to win the game if you've got communicating allies and this Earthshaker was an absolute god. But I just want to also go over what I'm doing. So they have a clockwork lichen. Uh, it might actually be a little bit here. Uh, I might speed it up later on. Um, but they have a clockwork lichen here. I managed to get away from the stun lock of clockwork by cutting that one tree instead of having to go through two trees using my tango. Uh, they're both melee. They can do a lot of harass later on when they have abilities, but at early levels, I have ranged all attack. So I'm going to poke the crap out of this lichen. And this just happens for a while, while I get, like, harass in, I'm being in range, so my Divine Favor is giving aura to CK, so anytime they try to harass CK, he's just taking way less damage. I can speed up a bit now. And I'm waiting a bit until I get to my level 2, that's when I get my Holy Persuasion, and I can go find a creep. And I hope to go out that I get a Harpy Camp, because once you get Harpy Camp, you dominate lane, especially against these two people that are melee and don't have any ranged harass, so I can just keep poking at them. But if you don't, then I usually, if I don't get like a camp uh, with a good harass creep, like the harpy or the ghosty, uh, I then go and you send the creep to either pull waves or stack. So here I get a kobold, which has this uh, ranged person, which I'm not exactly sure what they're called. Uh, this boy. The ill troll berserker. So yeah, I go send him to pull the wave while I'm heading back to get the XP range and to give auras and and mental and emotional support to the CK. Blood. The lane is getting Things pulled, which means the wave is going to come back and it's a bit safer for CK, so they're not having to farm under tower where they have the armor from being under tower and it's hard to harass them. Uh, Our Shaker's roaming around, he goes to get the bounty, which is very helpful, and he's going to go harass and stuff because Axe is just kind of chilling here and they can't really do anything to him and he's just yes. farming basically. So every so often I wait, I saw that there was harpies here. So I think I'm sending this creep to go harass and potentially pull later on. Alright. So I'm going to go to a player perspective, because basically I'm just keeping my camera 
throwing down the Chen Dawn. I still have no idea who this is. I just like the spray. Uh, I scouted, I believe, the Harpy Camp, which I'll go grab in a second. There we go. I see it now. The win condition right here. I go to stack the camp, so I still have a camp left over to pull. And then I go replace my boy with the Harpies. Which is very goog. You have basically like this range zap ability that you'll see in a second. It's, the camera's a bit shaky because it's speedy. I'm going to turn it down. Look at that. Look at that range on that zap. I'm also buying a Ring of Basilius, which will give me mana regen aura, which is very helpful for the Harpy. Because the Harpy doesn't really have very good... Uh, this guy's getting fucked up, sadly. The Harpy hasn't got very good base regen, but with the Basilius aura, it helps a lot. So you can get those spams out. Yeah, that was quite rough. He went in pretty deep under the, underneath the tower and died, but it's not too bad. I basically was trying to send the Harpy over here to stack a camp. Whenever uh, I'm not doing anything, I'm just like, well, I'm just going to go stack camps, but I was a bit late. But at least I got the stack on this small camp. I, I think I actually failed the stack because one of the creeps was creep blocking, so I thought the camp was blocked, so I put a ward down there. Yeah. Oh, that's so weird. I'm like red, so I keep thinking that's an enemy ward, but that's my ward. Yeah, Hellshaker, Ogre, getting a crap out of them. Uh, direct to camera, play perspective. Alright, so it's just laning phase, so there's not a lot going on right now. It's just me trying to stay in lane to harass, give auras, and get XP, because one of the mistakes I did early on. And still at the moment, uh, also I'm TPing my Harpy to me with the persuasion so I can get the harass sap in. Uh, mistakes I tend to make is, oh, I'm just gonna like give all the wave XP to my carry and then go and like pull waves and stack camps and stuff like with my body, which puts me a lot behind on getting my ultimate, which is very crucial to get early on because that enables people to play aggressively and potentially make up the punish by having that Soraka heal. So he's getting gone on. I'm getting some Harpy harass. Earth Shaker's coming in for the uh, setup. Everyone's going under the tower here. Living Armor really tanking them. The illusions from Ogre Magi body blocking the CK. And he slowly dies. And I'm just kind of here, I guess. And I think my Harpy died. Sad. G so yeah, I'm just like trying to harass the star as much as I can. We had a catapult wave. People are moving back to like farm, but I said that we should probably push because of catapult. So we're gonna do a good damage here. I haven't got a creep, so I'm constantly moving back, being like, oh man, I need to get a creep and touch hook somebody. It's rough. I'm like, oh man, we should probably back out, but people are staying. We're gonna do damage. We're determined to get that tower. He gets hooked again this is bad i did a penitent slow on pudge to potentially slow him down so he doesn't chase i can imagine does a good job body blocking but he gets caught in the cogs i'm trying to put my slow onto people so they don't chase as much i grab this creep to potentially aggro and body block but they back off that shaker goes back in it's just a lot of chaos going on i should just set the free camera because you're seeing my screen go around this guy is in super deep he's gonna get caught also, one thing that confused me a lot is this Lycan, like, didn't use his wolf super often. Like, I was kind of, like, giddy that I was playing against a Lycan because I've never seen a Lycan uh, in this patch before. And I'm like, this hero should be strong. I should be seeing it everywhere. But then I realized I'm in, like, 900 MMR, so it's like, I was going to play Lycan here. So I really wanted the Steeler's wolf, but I didn't really get any opportunities. Uh, where am I at? Oh, yeah. Dyer's top tower is escaping. Attack. I think I'm like positioning myself to be like, all right, fun's over. Everyone's going back to farming. I'm going to go stack some camps, smile. I'm just waiting around here to try and get this double stack. Uh, it's also coming up to middle tower is uh, 10 minutes, so I want to get my tome. I'm pretty sure I'm going to level up here. Oop, oop, that's a really good stack. You get that, that. And then you run down there and you can double stack these. Very goog. Middle tower is under attack. I'm trying to get my Vlads, but I don't earn a lot of gold because I'm not super actively near the fight. So I'm just like, man, I got to pull. I got to stack. This is super interesting. So I'm going to start skipping. 
a lot more space. Okay, just trying to play near the CK, give them a bit of security if they get gone on. Get my tome, I get my six. I can potentially save this. Oh, I think actually there's a good hand of God coming up. It's okay. This guy's in. Going for the kill. Goes for the salve. Living armor. That was pretty good cog because he saved himself. I grabbed my centaur. Ogre Magi is going for a stun. And watch this. He goes for the stun. I move up my centaur. Chain stun! Because the centaur's got like a wind up stun. So it's really good for a second chain stun. It's a lot of crap going on here. Drain ultimate. Lycan overcommits. My centaur's tanking all the damage so I didn't get the opportunity to get another stun. Lycan's just running away and I'm like, man, I'd really like to dive, but there's a tower right there. I feel like I'm going to get killed. I'm just trying to be nearby. If I can auto attack for penitence, for penitence and pudge, but Ogre Magi doesn't get any more bonks in. Penitence does pretty good. 30 extra attack speed. Yeah, we didn't, sadly didn't get the... Luckily, we did get the uh, Lycan kill. Uh... And yeah, we're like slowly pushing this tower again, and I'm like, man, I lost my center. I really want some creeps, so I'm like, I'm just gonna stack this and hopefully get like a kobold or a harpy. Kobold would be very nice here because it gives everybody basically a winless. I get extra speed. So since we're like grouping and going for like the goon squad, we can like get the extra speed. Bird is very good here. I'm not exactly, not exactly sure like what a lot of these creeps are called. I just keep forgetting, so I just call them the burb. Uh, this one gives them a three armor ore, which is to my already existing stuff. Anyone near me gets seven armor. Very goo. We're about to get this tower. Oh no, not enough living armor. Let's see. Oh, this guy's actually been like maxing living armor. I was about to say, he should be maxing it. He is. We're just too, doing too much damage. A little advice. And I was like, ah, I'm going to send my tornado in to kill the tree. And... So it doesn't help. And I'm like, well, I'm going to leave and cancel the channel from my burb and run away. Oh no, Lycan, don't get my bird. Oh, oh no. And he lives. And then when I spawn, I activate my, uh, what is it called? Rapture, I think it's called. And send them back. Just in case Lycan was like chasing to like kill them, but I'm fine. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Still down with my Vlads, carrying dust just in case. And I'm like, well, I should probably go somewhere. Let's go to like a lane and get XP or coming up to 30 seconds. You know what time it is? Stacking time. Loads of money. And I'm TPing the bird into me. Hopefully I can get like a triple stack here. Sending that one. And I'm going to go for the double stack on here again. And send this one to go stack that camp. And I can pull it a little bit earlier because that one's already got stacks. There's a lot of creep block they have to deal with. And let's see what we get. Oh, hey, this is the favorite. This is my favorite part about Dota 2, the stacking time. I don't care if people farm these stacks at all. I just like doing it. It's like cookie clicker. I just get the dopamine rush in my brain when I get a stack. It's so good. Like the reason why I started playing Chen was because it was the only guy in Dota Plus who has a relic for keeping track of how many camps stacked. If there was like a camp stacked relic for like, I don't know, like Pudge, I'd probably be a Pudge man. But here we are with Chen, the best hero, but also pretty bad if you don't have game sense like me. And there's a fight going on up top. I could have probably gotten some gold and gotten my Vlads if I was participating in that, but I'm like, nah. And you get Harpy. And you get like Harpy's Feather Duster and just wipe the board. And like sit back, get some harass. If it comes to nighttime, I've got some good night vision. Ah, oh, rip. Push it. Alright, let's fuck him up. Penitence, bonk. I'm also trying to be self-conscious about my creeps here because the well, Alpha Wolf has got really small hitbox uh, to the point where like it will basically walk its face into a creep before it kills it. So it usually is the first one to die because it falls aggro. So I want to try and position them so that everyone's in aura range but they're outside. The Alpha Wolf, by the way, gives everybody a... Where are you, Wolf? Because I run 30% bonus damage. Now, this is base damage and not damage with modifiers, otherwise, that would be fucking busted. But that's still very good. Gives everybody so much extra damage. Also, gives crit chance to the wall. Doesn't really come up. 
I've yet to find a thing that that could be useful for. Maybe that could be good for like split pushing, but the wolf will then die really quick unless that has like frost mage armor. So yeah, I died again in that fight, so I'm like, you know what? Back to stacking. Let's go. And I'm like, that was like, I don't think I get any stacks here because those camps are already are pretty full. There's a fight going on. I don't care. I'm stacking. Smile. Uh, I think I'm TPing in here. Yeah, I'm slowly TPing in. Earthshaker about to die. Good thing I have my win button. He doesn't die. Easy game. Hell yeah. And now I rapture in my creeps and almost run out of mana. I have my Vlads now. So as long as I'm somewhat near the fight, I'm creating value. I'm a dispenser now, smile. As long as they keep hitting creeps and hitting people, they're going to get regen. They're going to get extra damage. They're going to get armor. They're going to get mana regen. It's so good. I think it actually, like, funnily enough, like, my the last video I did, like, that Chen was, like, Vlad's meta too, where you first rush. But, like, since then, I've been going, like, mech pretty much every time. But, like, now mech... Like, you still want to get mech, like, later on. Get, like, a Guardian Greaves if the game goes on long enough. But, like... Or, like, against certain lineups. But I've just been going Vlad's and then, like, Solar Crest and Drum. Get all these, like, really good auras for pushing. Getting some early value. So yeah, they keep going deep. This is a really aggressive team. I really like it. They benefit a lot from my auras and my abilities. I'm pushing the wave, not paying attention to the minimap at all, because who does that? There's a fudge here. Thankfully, he didn't hook me, the easier target. Probably a lot of creeps blocking his view. I wasn't able to heal Sadga, but I'm trying to back up. Have my creeps within range, trying to throw like a troll net on somebody. I can't actually remember if troll net breaks uh, the channel for dismember i think it does i think roots tend to do that but i could be wrong so here i'm like all right they're going on me i'm gonna die i'm gonna move here and then like move my creeps away but the earth shaker comes in echo slammer jammer and absolutely destroys them so i'm trying to position my creeps so that there's always an aura i'm not making use of my harpy because i'm not a very good gamer I'm also trying to be conscientious of not trying to body block the axe, but I do so anyway because I'm also a bad gamer. Thankfully, we are very good here. We all survive. It's fine. I get some good tornado damage. I'm like, okay, I'm going to respawn soon. I'm going to move my creeps away and potentially heal them up in base because while I can't send things back to base anymore, I can at least potentially do that with my creeps. I'm going to I say this now, but I don't know if I'm actually doing it. Okay, no. This is when... Okay, yeah. I, that's later on, I think, when I have Ancients. So I, I see the bot lane is pushed. I need to get money for my shard, because once I get shard, the game is over. And I rapture in all my creeps here. Also, fun fact, I really like with Chen. I'm actually really tempted at some point to make, like, a top 10 tips you didn't know about Chen, but I don't know how many people are actually interested in that, because I'm not regularly a Dota 2, like, content creator. Um... But one of my favorite tips is with the Harpy, where the Harpy has really good night vision. So you can TP it onto like one of the ward spots and it's basically a ward. I had like a game where I was just kind of fucking around because I like was lucky enough to grab three Harpies and I was just trying to set up a Harpy on each of the ward spot and there's like, I was just pretty much wasting my time. <laughs> but it was like, oh man, I really just had Harpies everywhere. All the free wards and they just live until people go and de ward and see there's a Harpy there. And it's like, what the fuck and kill it. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot of fighting going on in mid. People who could probably benefit from my Vladimir's offering, but I mean, fuck that. I'm just like, I'm just vibing. There's a DD here. Oh shit. Okay, let's go. I have my Vlads. I'm a buckler. Everyone standing near me is getting a crap load of armor. They're getting four plus three. That's uh seven. That's eight, nine, and that's. Uh, the bird, I think, is... Oh, yeah, double stack. Hell yeah. And, yeah, so I get 12 armor, I think, to everybody nearby. So I get, like, that casual double stack over there. I'm prepping my ancients, so when I get a shell, I get more options. But also for a farm. That's the secret trick with Chen stacking, is that you're doing it for, like, farm for your carries. Or at least that's what it looks like. But really, you're just giving yourself more options. You're just get, you're just potentially spawning a variety of creeps that you can choose from. But you know, it makes sense why Chen is the creep. The, the, the creep. The, I'm thinking too much creeps. I'm too deep in the Inception uh, 
that's why Chen is the stacking hero. It'd be nice to have it on Kotal though, because Kotal can get some pog stacks. Stomp. Alright, watch me tactically creep block my entire team here. I'm actually just slowing them down so they don't run into danger. It's all about like damage prevention, really. So I'm running around looking for better creeps to have because I have this harpy, I have this troll, which are all right. But I'd rather have better ones. I tell this Axe, hey, don't kill the red red guy, the tomato. I want him. Okay, now everybody gets an attack speed aura, like 15 extra attack speed, which is very cool because we have a CK, we have a no go, an X. Attack speed is pretty good. And I also really want to get a ogre frostmate, so I can give everybody a plus five armor and an on hits uh, move and attack speed slow. Which is probably my favorite and best creep. You know, besides the ancients, I feel like ancients kind of make every other creep just seem not as good by comparison. Especially if you get the rumble hide, which sadly I didn't get this game. But the rumble hide, uh, hopefully they don't kill it in time. I'm gonna pause real quick. The rumble hide is these little tiny blue boys. Or ancient rumble hide. The wardrobe's aura. They give a 25 attack speed bonus and 40% accuracy. Now that's cool, especially since n not really, I can't, I'm trying to think of many items that give you accuracy. If there are, there's probably maybe like one or two, and they're probably very expensive items. And accuracy basically is the antithesis to like evasion and dodge. So like, if you have a character like uh, Phantom Assassin, who gets a lot of evasion, then if you take this aura, you can basically just invalidate their hero by just taking a creep and a charge, which gives Chen a ton of value, which is very fun. I'm very glad that they added the ability, the ability to gain access to Ancients to be a lot more reasonable. I've also yet to play a game where I build Aghanim Scepter as Chen, which I really like to do, because what they did to his Scepter is made it so when you ult, you give everyone a strong dispel, which basically gets rid of like any CC unless it specifically says like cannot be dispelled. So shit like Tidehunter's ultimate or Shadow Fiend's ultimate or Quop's ultimate, like a lot of the like or Echo Slam, like any like sort of big initiation ultimate that does like a stun. Here I'm just clearing the camps, getting some extra gold so I can get my shard and I can grab these Ancients, before any of my uh, cores are like, ooh, Ancients, for me, is for me, points fingers together. No, they're mine. And I go grab this rumble hide, and then I get confused later on when I lose it, and I think it's because I send it towards the enemy creeps and they kill it. The rumble hide is very cool, because the rumble hide, let me pause the gameplay again and make you more annoyed, uh, gives a frenzy, which gives whoever I target an attack speed boost. So it's kind of like a blood rage, and since we already have a no-go, we could have a double blood rage. And see, I give it to CK right now, and then I forget uh, that, uh, about its existence. I'm not sure what happens here, because I lose it at some point, and I don't know why. So I'm also going to... Oh, I see. That's why. Okay. I was like, I, I, where did I lose this creep? When did I lose it? Did it get hurt? I forgot because it really comes up because old Aghanim Scepter for Chen ne never came up. The only time it came up was when I played a really long game of an alchemist and he's like, I'm going to give you Aghanim Scepter. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. I don't know what my creeps do. Oh, grab the big boulder guy. He's probably useful. Um, but you can only have any, as many ancients as you have like points of hand of gold. I'm pretty sure. Is under yeah. So I lost that one, sad guy. But the Black Dragon's pretty good. Give us a plus three armor aura. Let me speed up the game again because it's gone a bit slow. Uh, and you can throw a fireball, which is very goog. I have some footage of me throwing down a fireball on a phantom answer is his name phantom answer pl payload i threw a fireball on the payload and it just fucking killed all his illusions which is great because in our lineup we didn't have anything to deal with all those illusions so throwing down a fireball and just destroying all of them was very helpful as well as the armor. So Black Dragon, very goog.
especially if you're on a split push because you can just wipe a wave and then i grab this big granite boy which gives everyone 15 percent extra maximum health which is very good especially since we have ck axe and uh, shake granoga lots of chonky big boys who want to get a lot of extra health so yeah more fights that i'm not a part of to get the xp boost because i'm too busy grabbing groups and I think the game kind of slows down a bit because we were invading a lot of people and then the enemy d decided... Let me actually check to see what the enemy is doing. I think the enemy is just playing super safe. And like this, this punch is going fishing, but otherwise they're playing like pretty far back. Like I wouldn't be surprised if like Trian went Dyer's over and started like farming our camps, but I haven't really making use of that. Ooh, the Dyer's middle tower has fallen. bottom tower is under attack. No broadcaster. Oh, I wonder if I can cast this game as a VOD. It's kind of sad that it doesn't pick up the uh, voice chat. Um, I guess that's intentional because the majority of Dota games probably involve slurs. Uh, but there was a lot of communication going on in this game. It was very cool. Um, yeah, back to my player perspective. Let's pick up the DD. I think we're questioning whether or not we want to push or do Rashan. So we're just going after the people we see on the minimap. Uh, boop, doop, doop, speed up, speed up. Yeah, so I got a pretty good lineup here. I got the Black Dragon, I got the Granite Boy, I have the Tomato, which gives her an attack speed. I've got the Cross Mage, which I keep forgetting to individually give armor to people. But it's pretty useful. Clockwork goes in. Let me slow it back down. Throw Pantons on him. He's having a bad time. I also threw a Fireball, as you can see on the ground. It has like a lingering damage over time effect which is very fun against Clockwork because he just traps himself in the cogs and is stuck in like a fireball. <laughs> I guess it's less of a fireball, it's more like a flaming sphere or like a... That was pretty good. Trent's like, I did my job and then leaves. And we're like, we should chase this man, but he just gets away. Radiance Middle Tower yeah. is under attack. I'm building slow crest, I'm gonna get drum afterwards because Looks who needs like to buy boots when you can just buy multiple doors. instances of windlace Radiance middle tower is under attack. Uh, speed bank up team goes on for like 50 minutes so uh, i'm going to be quite liberal of my speeding up yeah just harassing towers and stuff pretty goog i lose my frost mage to tower harass because axe wanted to save taking 200 damage even though he's got like Has 22 regen and then he goes in he's on his own alone so sad i lost frost mage the main character of this anime sad so yeah i'm on i'm roaming around i want to find a kobold because that will give our group a lot more movement speed so we can do fast rotations and run at them a lot better i managed to get this ghosty which ends up being a problem later on we also noticed there's a wolf here like we notice a lichen wolf, and let me actually like go back a bit and check free camera. So there's a lichen wolf here somewhere. Yeah, there's invis ones. I didn't actually know they could make them invis. Is that like a talon? Um, oh, the walls. Oh, what's that sound? Oh, it's the flare sound. Okay, I thought that was like I, I was going deaf for a second. Um, is there something here that makes them invisible? I'm not entirely sure I haven't played like them. Yeah, there's invisible walls here, and like we see them because they're by the outpost that we have control of. So I'm like, I'm gonna slam them, get through some AoE damage. I throw a fireball on the ground, and it's that, that's, it walks past, I'm like, alright, fuck this guy. Dust! <laughs> we fucking kill the wolf. <laughs> and I think, uh, like, it actually, like, spawns new wolves or something nearby. Also, this guy leaves for a second, but it's fine. Yeah, he spawns new wolves to actually deny those walls, which is quite smart. We denied the, like, second wolf. But that was really funny. I, I didn't know, like, invisibles were, like, a thing. And, like, just seeing it, I was like, what? What is this? We must throw a fireball at it and, and hunt this creature down. Bottom tower is under attack. Yeah. Dyer's this guy can have invisible walls. That's pretty damn cool because you could scout with that. So I might look into Lycan if I ever find core enjoyable at all. But, yeah, we smoke. But like, let's go find stuff, and we're just running around in circles. And then the fight happens down here, and the clockwork goes in. He's like, "Hi, I'm here," and I'm like, "All right, sure." And throw a fireball on the ground, and we kill a bunch of people. Bonk. Yeah, so we're going for a dive here. We're like, mm, maybe we shouldn't dive. We haven't got like a creep wave fully. 
We still haven't killed this tower. So it's kind of questionable whether or not we dive. So let's just slowly harass this tower. And oh my god. And then obviously during this time I'm wandering around being like, man, I wish I had like, a cross mage or something. So every so often I'm just like moving around to check camps when they spawn. Harassing this, so I want to have my creeps somewhat nearby in aura range, but make sure they don't get hit by the tower. And then it's just getting low, I just put in the damage. I also get my solo crest. So it's time to fucking slam jam, let's go. I can put my uh, solo crest on Anx, he gets that max speed, move speed and armor. And we hit the crap out of this tower, bonk. And okay, I want to know what happened to that clockwork. Because that happened and we were all in comms being like, what, what the fuck happened, what? And we were like, tip this man. Uh, I think he might have hit a wolf, is my guess. Like an invisible wolf, he just like hook shot. Let me see. Oh, he hit a creep. Wait. I think that was a range creep right there. Oh, yes. So this creep just ran away and had like. Oh, I think it's because he used his um, Berserker's Cool or something like that, and it made it run away, maybe? I know, Berserker's Cool should taunt them. I don't know why they run away. Either way, that was a really funny interaction. Clockwork just hooked, got really unlucky with Hookshot. Like, that that sucks. I don't think you could have anticipated that. Because a lot of time you're not, like, looking and then clicking. It's, like going through the motions like oh shit it's not for time to hook shot Ugh, you do it you know it's like an air shot you don't think about it you just do it so, yeah playing the bottle racks we're like man you know we should probably kill mid tower and get mid racks but we're like now nah, let's stay around here and hit these like weak buildings i'm also responsible for this um, and then we linger around, Axe is like, you know what, I could probably take four people, so stuff happens, and it's quite bad, and Pudge is like, I'm gonna just, you know, eventually hook one of these guys, and he's just like, and he hooks one of his friends, and pulls them back, and Clockwork goes in, and kills Earthshaker, and I'm like, you know what, I think I'm done, I think I might leave, yeah, I'm just gonna run, so what I do is I move up here, I get rid of this smoke to give myself the movement speed to run away, and what is quite useful here is when I smoke, all my creeps don't go invisible, which means someone is in my on my tail chasing me because the creeps, uh, because if you're too close to someone, smoke breaks. So I'm like, I'm going to move over here. I'm going to move my creeps north. Hopefully they go after one or the other. And they didn't actually chase me, which is fine. And I get all these free bounties. Oh, money, money, money. And top is being pushed a little bit, so I comment on that, and then I'm like, hmm, I contemplate for a second. Repent. Do I want two black dragons? Nah. I'm just gonna farm some camps and get some, uh, get my drum, I think. Or I think I was getting wards, I can't remember. Usually the only time I attempt to farm a camp like this is if, like, I'm close to getting an item. Oh, uh, the Earthshaker was like, hey, you should build a full staff because they have cogs and you can launch them out of cogs. And I'm like, that's a really smart idea, I should take that. I was just obsessed with getting my drum, which is very goog. You can give everyone attack speed, movement speed, and you basically have an extra bit of movement speed, so you don't have to worry about buying boost at all. And, yeah, you can activate it at its charge and give everyone a buff. For sure, this lineup is very good. Also, another useful uh, tidbit of information. If you have a drum and it's on zero charges because you've used them all, and you're like, oh man, now it's only giving me 20 move speed or this is useless. Well, if you buy another recipe of the drum, you can refill the charge, which is really cool. And to be honest, it probably should say it somewhere on the item because that's that's one of my problems with uh, Dota 2 is there's a lot of really interesting stuff that the game doesn't tell you and you just have to kind of either figure it out or have someone call you a fucking idiot in a game because you didn't know an obscure piece of information that you didn't know because you're going to be playing the game <laughs> since the start. Yeah, I send my creep up top to try and kill it so that I can have enough space to grab another creep and stack the ancients, but this guy goes and farms, which is not very epic style. Uh, also, my creep doesn't die because they actually pushed the wave, so I delay my creep dying. That, that's a feature I would really like in the game, to be able to select a creep that's part of your army, and then um, you have like an X that you can press like to like force deny it to like get rid of the creep so that you can go pick up a new creep and then instead of it replacing your last most persuaded creep which might be more valuable 
that would be a nice quality of life change. But I don't think they'll do that. Um, so yeah, I send this creeper around and I'm like, man, this creeper isn't dead. I'm just going to wander them back. Uh, so I think there's a big lull here. Lul. So I'm going to speed up until action happens. So I think we're just positioning. We're farming. We're trying to push lanes, getting items, warding. The enemy team is playing super safe right now. Uh, only occasionally peeking if uh, Cockwork can go for picks. I noticed that Lycan is actually split pushing now, so he's actually performing the role of his character. Very cool. I'm very happy for him. So he's going to keep messing with bot lane while we decide who we're going to send back. Should probably be like maybe Axe or mm, actually probably Ogre. I'm not sure. We have a lot of good initiators. I mean, I could probably go back and I still have my ult, but I'm kind of the aura guy, so I kind of need to be here. So, fight happens. It's very not poggers. I heal to try and save Earthshaker. Helps a little bit. I'm not going a heal build, so it's not an insane heal. I'm like, alright, I'm going to back off and harass the tower a bit more. I do avoid the blink dismember, thankfully. And this guy's going to get bopped. Bonk. And that's a pretty good Earthshaker earth, earth slammer, and I slowly die to poison damage or something like that. Anyway, my creeps are starting to die. I'm like, oh man, I think we might actually kind of lose as a result of this fight because we're like literally fighting underneath a tower that's like about to die, but we're not killing it, so we're just taking all this extra damage. Um, so that's kind of rough. Uh, did I just commit my creeps here to like killing the tower? and then decide to send them back because I'd like to keep them alive. That'd be ideal. I throw a fireball to hopefully dissuade Drow from chasing. It kind of works out. Uh, and yeah, and just start moving my coots back and when I respawn, I, I can TP them away. So I'm like, you know what? I probably can't stack with these creeps. It's it's already like, it's 10 seconds. So I'm going to have to wait a while. Uh, so I'm going to move them into the rush bit to see if I can catch Roshan respawning by the time that they're around. So I just have them kind of vibe in here and then the big guy and the dragon and just chatting to each other being like wow that was a really cool fight wasn't it yeah let's go do another one sure also we apparently stole neutral items from them that's pretty cool water break yeah so i raptured them back to base so i could heal them up and now they're the best of friends i'm deciding where to go i'm like hmm i can go mid tower and start walking up maybe i could go to the outpost and stack but I missed the timer for the stack. It's like now it's going to respawn, so it's not worth it. Uh, wait. Did I just TP to that tower even though the mid tower? Okay, I, I don't understand. Uh, teleports anyway. Also, I missed out on potentially getting the outpost tele, but I didn't know they were going to go do that sad go. At least I get the bounty and the burb. It was worth it after all. I got the burb. We have even more armor auras. Hell yes. So, okay, I'm going to go speed it back up. Uh, Arming, pushing, I eventually get my full staff. It's very fun. It's great. It's amazing. I rapture my creeps in. They're all together. They're all friends. I actually place a ward for the first time because those shakers been doing an amazing job warding. I'm so used to doing all the warding. It's very weird. I don't get any unique creeps here. I want to get like an alpha wolf or a tomato or a frost mage, but sadga. So let's push out this wave. Place down this sentry just in case Trin is like vibing nearby for an ultimate. I'm like, all right, fight time. Let's go. I'm gonna, while they're going in deep, I'm gonna stand back here and then hit the barracks, which is the thing that we were meant to be doing. But instead, access to the fountain diving because apparently the fountain doesn't have a defense system installed, and that was a big oversight. So you might as well send people in. But then he gets hooked in and he gets sent all the way to Brazil and Clockwork goes in at the same time, which would have been really funny if he like jumped in and then Pudge pulled him out. But I kind of caught him in between. I'm like, well, this is a bit of deja vu. I'm going to leave, but I don't have a smoke to get away. So I'm going to back up and throw the crest this ogre to give him some extra armor and move speed. And then he gets also hooked. So this is quite bad. So I want to leave as much as possible because I don't want to give them an ability to get back into this game. To be fair, they're still in the game, but it's only, it's, it's only we have an 11k gold lead. But Lycan is doing a pretty good job ratting whenever there's not team fights. So if they wiped us, they could probably do significant damage to the base. Also, I'm pretty sure at this point Lycan has boots of travel. Yeah, he does. So he could like just do a ton of damage right now. 
Uh, yeah. We have like three of our cores down, but we still have CK who's one and I'm five. So he goes after my granite boy. I force stuff him out of the cogs, but I turn him around accidentally. I try to use him to body block, but I'm not very good at that. So I start to run away. I think I go for a fireball here, but nah, I just decide to back up. I also pop the drum to give everyone extra speed so we can run. And by everyone, I mean me and my friends and the CK, who is not my friend. I don't know him. He's a stranger. Well, I get a Cobalt, which is very gook. Uh, let me check the Cobalt. It gives everyone 12% move speed aura, which now that I think about it is even better than I thought before. Because before, like a while ago, uh, move speed worked in percentages. But then they changed it to like flat numbers. So like if I open up the shop, and I check uh, boots. This gives me 45. And then if I build it into tranquils, I'll get 65. Or if I build it into travels, it'll give me 100. And the only other thing that gives percentage, I believe, is uh, Yasha. Yeah. And I'm glad I can remember that. I've never bought that item. And uh, spider legs. I don't know if you can actually see in the shop. I I think we have a spider legs. Like, what do we do? Uh, no, that just, that just, that's flat. I think it used to give percentage, but now it's flat. So, like, having a thing that gives percentage is really good. Because, it, like, the more movement speed you have, you get, like, even more from a kobold. So if you already have, like, a speedy lineup, as a result of having a drum, the kobold just kind of stacks with that. So I finally buy boots, because I'm like, all right, Probably got a man hungry people. Someone was complaining, like, do you have boots, Chen? I'm like, better <laughs> buying boots on Chen, lol. Uh, why do I need boots when I'm on a mount the entire time? <laughs> May I have some shoes? Uh, so I decided to actually buy them and be like, all right, I've actually like got most of the items I tend to get in this game, and I have way more money than I'm used to having. So I'm like, you know, I'm going to buy Guardian Greaves. Uh, so I'm like, all right, let's go Arcane Boots. And my Kobold sadly gets immediately killed by the OP uh, Pudge Hook. I send in the dragon to do some fireball damage. My granite boy is just vibing and occasionally harassing people and giving people the aura. I'm like, I'm going to hit the barracks. Not the one that's low health, but the other barracks. Because I'm going to pretend I'm helping. Everyone's diving. I'm pretty sure this is when we start doing a lot more work. Uh, we start hit breaking down the towers here. And we're like, man, we can end the game here. So I'm going to solo crest. I solo crest the illusion and not hero because clicking is hard. I should really just click on like the area up top instead of like where you can select the hero's portrait. But I always make that mistake. Uh, and I'm like, man, we should end the game here. But we're losing Axe, we're losing Ogre. They're actually quite scary here. They still have like team fight ability. So we we back up. I believe. So I can speed up a little bit. And we position ourselves to shove top lane a bit. But then Lycan's in base actually doing stuff. So I TP back to go deal with stuff. And then I realize, oh crap, I'm Chen. I can't really do the stuff. So everyone else come back to help. Which was very nice. Bonk. Bouncy boy. And now another break period. I get mechanism, which is nice for healing. We need wards. Uh, stuff is happening over there. Is that the Kerper fire? Wait. Did I just use... Oh, okay. I think it was... Alter... Camp. Yeah. 10 second cooldown. Just weird, because it's like a global alt sound, so it's pretty strange when it just comes out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, so Pudge, uh... Nice, people again. Now, like, we're like, we should prep for a Roshan, but we don't have a lot of vision. So, Axe just is like, you know what? What if I just went in, smile? Yeah. And we're like, hmm, maybe we shouldn't do Roshan. And then we're like, actually, but what if we did? So, we go back in. And for some reason, I cannot see Roshan fit. Oh, yeah, it's because they're taking Roshan now. And then we go and fight. And then Earth Shaker carries the game. And I exist because I put Solar Crest on somebody. And I ult it. And then we get Rashad. Smile. And we're like, you know what? 
Uh, it's potential that Lycan could TP behind us because he has boost of travel, but it's fine. We can just rush the base. So we just hit the crap out of the uh, the throne, and the amount of orders we have on screen is breaking over the HUD because that's Chen for you. Then we're like, all right, I'm gonna slowly die if this drow keeps auto attacking me. So I should probably like heal, and then thankfully they get stunned by the power of pure skill. So I'm like, I'm gonna stand over here, keep hitting the throne, and that's the end of the game. It was very fun. Hopefully that commentary wasn't just a bunch of me rambling. It probably was. But hopefully that was also fun. Because I really like that game. And I've learned a lot more things about Chen. I'm coming close to uh, level 24 on my Chen. Which is very cool. It'll be nice to get to like rank 25. I'm still stuck in uh, 900 MMR because I refuse to play ranked because my first experience playing ranked was 9 out of 10 games being Meepo and Tinker Smurfs. Uh, and I, I don't I don't care about ranked that much. That's just like too much mental energy for like basically no reward. So I'm just fine just playing pub games as Chen. But they're a very fun character. Also, you can check my stats. They're not very good. I have a pretty high win rate, even though it feels like sometimes I just go on lose streaks like here. I overall, I think I do all right. Definitely not the best. But considering I'm a person who plays Chen in like 900 MMR in only pubs in games where people don't know how to make use of Chen, and you basically have no laning stage pressure unless you gamble and get a harpy. Doing all right. Doing all right. Yeah. Hopefully this is enjoyable. Uh, if you if you'd like to see my guide, uh, it's on my Steam profile, or you can just see it scrolling down enough. The noob's guide to Chen. Uh, I update it pretty frequently whenever I see those changes and the Chen mains I watch because I'm super obsessed with Chen. Uh, do do new things. I'll try that. But yeah. This is my video. Hopefully you enjoyed the Chen video. If not, well, no, I can't. I can't please you. No one can. All right. See ya. Bye. And you can use that to like TP them on top of like a ward spot. And harpies <laughs> yes. have insane night vision. This <laughs> guy's muted me. Harpies are what again? So, what are harpies? The the harpies are the like. Ones that spawn in small camp, the wings are like the wings and they're purple and they got a lightning bolt. Uh, yeah, yeah.